What's up? My name's Liv. I'm still taking a break. And we are your mother. Stop. Alright, guys. So we have. Did I just do like a Sam and Colby thing? Don't they always do that? I need to stop. Anyways, okay, so. Speaking of Sam and Colby, we do reaction videos to paranormal investigations. So I thought instead of doing the like, oh my god, the REM pod's going off in the corner, we're gonna lose our crap, we're gonna repeat everything that the spirit box says, like paranormal investigation reaction video, I wanted to try a just like exploring abandoned places reaction video. Because if you guys are new to the channel, my name's Liv, M who's usually here, but is taking a break from videos this week. We both are psychic mediums, and one of the services that I offer is house readings. So I know it sounds crazy, but after starting doing readings professionally as a psychic medium, I've been a psychic medium my whole life. I just haven't decided to do it professionally until later on in life. That's a whole story for another day. But I learned that houses, at some point, if they've been around long enough, like seep in and like, I don't know what like suck up all the energy like a sponge from the people places and things that are in it and uh sort of create like a sentience or consciousness for lack of a better word because it started with m's house and m's house explaining to cer explaining to me certain things about itself so that transformed into doing test readings on other people's houses and it's wild the information that houses give about themselves. So since then, I've talked to houses that like certain aspects about themselves, will convey to me information about like things that are going on with them, whether it be water damage, roofs, animals living in their attics, or just things that they like about the land that they're on. For example, I talked to a house that loved a family of squirrels that lived in the tree right outside of it. Okay, so I also wanna explain that one of the reasons I like going on paranormal investigations is not for like the spooky factor of it. Like honestly, if we could investigate in broad daylight, I would personally, since I'm a big scary cat, I would like to do that better. But everyone, it has to do with like, I don't know, Em and I have had this conversation and her prospect of it is that like, the reason people investigate at night is because one, no one is at those locations, like the places that paranormal investigators go to, and there's less noise in the background, I guess, because cars aren't going by, people aren't there, things aren't happening, but like the, the idea of paranormal activity happening during the day versus the night, I don't think there's a difference because the paranormal activity is always going to be there. Unless... You're at the Conjuring house. I, the last time we were there, when we went with Amanda from Mackie and Amanda, uh, you can watch that video over here if you want. Like, the thing is, the activity gets a lot worse at night, and I think that just has to do with a lot of different factors, but this video isn't about the Conjuring house. We're just talking about going to abandoned places or houses in general that have energy and stories and things like that. And my opinion is that there isn't that big of a difference or there shouldn't be, technically speaking, between paranormal activity during the day and paranormal activity during the night. I think it's just that like your mind is in a different mindset because it's quiet, I don't know. Anyways, when I was young, I had an appreciation for houses because one of my family members was a real estate agent and when they were watching me, I would have to go and just hang out with them while they did walkthroughs of houses before before they would show them to customers or clients, whatever. And uh, that is how I started to have this love of houses and or old houses and architecture. Old houses are so much cooler. Like my favorite thing about older houses is like the archways. New houses don't have archways, like the really nice like half circle, half moon archways. Everything's just square, everything's boxy, everything's really, really open, and it's almost like there's no like heart or soul put into them. So I love going to haunted locations or just older places and feeling the energy that has been put into a house from the years of people living there and just looking at all of the things that the house might even notice about itself because after years and years and years of activity and energy being put into it it has this new sentience of do you like the molding in this room do you like my fireplace in this room because i like my fireplace because it looks like this this and that and do you like this aspect about me and it's just so cool so that's what we're going to be doing today and i can't wait to share it with you so that's what we're going to be doing today 
I'm going to be reacting to Exploring the Abandoned Ghettos of the South, quote, Police Won't Go Here, but I think it's Exploring with Josh. I've never watched this channel before, but I think people, you viewers, sidekicks out there, have been like asking us to react to Exploring with Josh. So without further ado, that's what we're gonna do. Are you ready? Cool. Let's get into it. We might even make it up this. It might just fall right here. Oh God, maybe it will actually. Bunch of bees are right there. <sighs> just a railroad. You know, no big deal. Just, whoa, oh my God. This is treasure. This is treasure. And it's not, it's not treasure where obviously you take or steal. It's just treasure because you just found this amazing time capsule. 1850, this house is pretty much pushing 200 years old at this time. Hancock County, Georgia, founded in the late 1700s. The story of the county is an all too common one. A farming community pops up somewhere on the map, grows, thrives, and then all but disappears. Today we will be searching the town for some of the abandoned homes left forgotten and their beauty asking for their story to be told. So let's go to our first location of the day. Yep, what is up explorers? Today is super cool because we're exploring some southern abandoned houses. Some of my coolest stuff to do if they're actually cool. If the houses are there and there's stuff in it, it's really cool to me. This house is pretty unique because right here, Dr. John owns both the houses that are here on the land and he died. No one has been here since. Oh my God, this is so great. Okay, so they're talking about how Dr. John McCone is buried on his property of two houses, which is crazy. Uh, one, that's probably why the houses haven't been sold because I know there's, how old did he live to be? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70? So he only lived to be 40. Okay. So I did a reading one day with somebody and it was a psychic medium reading, not a house reading, but the person that I was talking to was a lovely lady and she wanted to know about certain things that I think it was her great grandmother or a great, it was a grandmother. I know for sure. I, I think it was her great grandmother, but anyway, she wanted to know what her grandmother or great grandmother wanted to know about them selling her property. And it was wild because all of a sudden this woman in spirit came forward and showed me a tree and like this big old field where it was like a, like a farming field almost. And then just this tree. And I was like, why is she showing me it like a fairy tree? But it wasn't necessarily a fairy tree. It was more just like a tree on the outskirts of a field. And if you don't know what a fairy tree is, ADHD side note, fairy trees are like the single trees that you'll see in the middle of like a giant farming field that back then people believed if they had to use the land for farming purposes and would clear cut all the forest to make a big field, they would leave one tree and that tree was for the fae. So that the fae would grant them like blessings or goodwill for their harvest and their crops. So it wasn't necessarily a fairy tree that the soul of this woman was showing me, but it was just a tree like on the outskirt of this big old farming field. And I felt like there was something there and it was weird. And this woman in spirit was laughing. She was just laughing about this tree. So I looked at her granddaughter, great granddaughter or whatever. And I said, why is, I said, she shows me a tree and she's laughing. And the tree's like in summertime, it's on the outskirts of the field, yada, yada, yada. And this, this woman, my client just started giggling. And I was like, okay, I'm obviously missing something here because you're asking me how your grandmother, family member feels about you selling off her land but you both are laughing that you have to clue me in on what's happening. I don't know what it is. The woman, the woman in spirit, her body was buried under that tree. <laughs> and I don't think like in this video, uh, Dr. John McCown had a, a headstone. I don't think she had a headstone. She was buried under the tree. And then it went into the whole like legal semantics of can you sell the land if someone's buried on it? Can you not? Yada, yada, yada. And it was just funny because this woman in spirit was like, they're probably not going to want it because I'm here. <laughs> and it was just one of the, 
one of my more interesting readings. But anyways, carrying on. So the house pretty much went abandoned in 1976 at this point. And his gravestone's still here. I'm with Steve Ronan, you already know. It's good. It's really cool because the land is still being taken care of, like up until like this point, just for his gravestone out of respect. And you can see right there, that's one abandoned house. And there's another one behind here. Now, Dr. John owned both the houses. He owned two of them and he lived in one of them and the other house was used for his staff. The one thing I hate about doing the southern spots is the spiders and all the crazy bugs. There could be a lot of them here. <sighs> Praying there's not though. Now the positive of doing southern spots are they are just literally forgotten about completely and wide open. Wow. It is trash though. Some old boots, fireplace, place is literally falling apart okay so they walked in and you see the blue room as soon as they walked into the blue room there is the soul of a little boy and also for anybody that's new to this channel let me just preface this the souls that are here that I perceive during this reaction video are not trapped at the place they are just there their energy is tied to it and when we and tied in the sense of they have free will. They can go between heaven and spirit and the physical world however they please. They're not stuck. There's no like, you need to cross over the soul because they're bound here. That's not how it is. It's just as a medium, I'm able to channel the energy that is associated to places, people, and things. So I just don't want anyone to get freaked out. Those are a little boy and then there's something weird. But he, the thing is, this little boy walked into the blue room and he was standing there. He's like, Mm, nine, ten, probably, and he might even be 13, sorry, and he says that he wants to know why um, Josh is walking in through what they say is the back of the house, because instead of using the front of the house, he's like, this is where all of the other people that worked here would come through, so why are you coming in through the back of the house, which is just funny. As you see, it's like this whole place is just taken over by nature. You can't even see the front anymore. Scared to walk any further over there. It's the toilet. I mean, that's cool details in the light switch. Look at this from the heat and moisture. Oh, that's so cool. Do you see the wood slat on the top of that house? Um, so whatever room they're in right now with the ceiling fan that's bending down, there is an older man who steps forward. He's wearing more like period attire, I would say. Um, almost like a... he's dressed for the day. He's not going out anywhere, but he is dressed with like a, a double breasted jacket almost. Uh, he wants me to say suit, but it's like a house suit. Um, he has dark hair and a mustache and he is smoking. So I feel like whatever room they're in would have been a room that more of the men were to sit in, whether it was an office or just like a smoking area. So I'm curious to see if he pans out and it looks something more of like a manly room. But I feel like he's from like the 1890s-ish to 1900s. That's like his attire. The fans just flop down. It looks sad. I mean, it's pretty big. It's wide open. Okay, so the room that you can kind of see it in the corner, it looks like it opens up into the back of the house. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'm right with that. Oh, and the stairs, they're about to go up the stairs. I don't understand why. But cats are so ridiculously spiritual, it annoys me. There is an orange cat on the stairs, so the soul of an orange cat. And he's like waiting for Josh to walk up the stairs. And I feel like there was three cats on this property. There's an orange one, an orange and white one. 
There is a tabby one, like a tiger stripe with white, and a black and white one. And I feel like they may be all male, but they lived here at one point in time. I like this door. Leads to the porch. Southern houses are just, I don't know, it's just nice. I just picture myself, you know, in a rocking chair, looking out at the French porch, <laughs> looking out at the, in the front of the porch and just rocking, rocking away. I love that he said I could just see myself sitting on the back porch, just in a rocking chair. And that's funny because as soon as he pans out into the that area, there's an older woman sitting in a rocking chair. She has her skirts and she's doing some mending. Um, she has things overlaid on her lap and I feel like her name started with an L like Lucille or Lucy something like that I just asked if it was Loretta because I think Loretta is like a southern name and she says no it's like Lucille I think and she's older she's probably in her 60s 70s and eh, 60s she says she's not that old and um, she's just sitting in a rocking chair doing mending on the back porch we can check down here see what's going on but I think this place is emptied out yeah, we'll head upstairs and pray we don't fall. So I think I'm gonna go upstairs, Steve, but catch me if I fall, cause it, it might happen. We might even make it up this, I might just fall right here. Oh God, maybe. Would you go up those stairs? I don't know, I'm kind of afraid of heights, I might not. I feel like I want to say that I would, but I, mm, let me know in the comments below if you would go down those stairs or up them. Maybe it will actually. Dude, look at all these dead, what is it, like birds? Just skeletons now. Yeah, there's a few of them. Even right there, like there's three, three bodies there, two bodies here. What the hell? Eh. Maybe we don't need to walk up here. Okay, so as soon as he panned up to the top, there is a... Uh... There's an older man, but I don't think he's associated with the house. So the, the people that I've talked about before, the boy, the man, and the woman, I feel like they lived in the house at some point in time. But I don't think the man that's at the top of these stairs is someone who lived there, but he's very old. He may have been someone who was less fortunate that lived in the house after it was unoccupied. Cause he's kind of behind like straight back at the window where you can see and to the left a little bit almost like a little uh just not responsive to people being there man you guys are watching this is like fall i hope he falls i hope he falls i ain't falling not bad it's so pretty okay so the room that he's in right now, I believe was a like master bedroom for the people that would have lived in the home. Um, so if you look to the left, it looks like there might've been a, like a fireplace or a banister and then the windows that go right back. But then if you look to the right, there's like an adjoining room. I feel like that would have been where the like woman of the house slept. And then the adjoining room would have been where the man of the house slept. Um, because they're next to each other and a lot of times in older days that is how it was like the husband and wife didn't necessarily sleep in the same bed or even in the same room uh, it used to be they would sleep in different rooms and then I want to say in the 1940s or 50s they would sleep in the same room but in separate beds and then you just like push the bed together for like you know what I'm talking about anyways um, so I feel like based on what the house is showing me this room was the lady of the house's room and it was adjoined to a man's room through that little walkway that you see to the right. All right, I'm getting out of here. There's no way I'm walking over there. Yes, let's go, let's go. Next house. Hopefully the next house has like some cool stuff in this. Oh, do you see how steep those stairs are? 100% an old house thing. I love it. Now the thing about the South is it's it's amazing for abandoned because there's a lot of secrets and treasure. You know, there's neighborhoods where houses are sitting there in time capsules for like the last 50 years. And to this day, no one knows about them. So you gotta go find them. But 
It's amazing when you find them. You never know. It's literally true treasure hunting. We're gonna head to the other house, so we're gonna head to Dr. John's house. Okay, so the house that they were just in, that was more so for um, the people that lived there at one point in time. Uh, he said, Josh says that it was Dr. John's like servants quarters basically. I feel like it wasn't his servants quarters all the time or if it was, it was like they had a family that lived there that ended up being the people that helped run his estate. Um, and sorry, I'm just thinking. I don't, I feel like, I feel like Dr. John, I don't want to talk too much about him because I'm sure he has descendants that are still alive, but I feel like he passed from pulmonary issues. So like lungs or chest or like lungs or chest. Um, but the house itself, that's what I wanted to talk about. The house itself um, that they just walked through is very... So when it comes to houses, they can be very similarly to trees too, masculine and feminine or both. And it when I say masculine or feminine, they don't have a gender or sexuality because it's a, it's a house. But the energy, the clairsentient feeling of the house is either more masculine or more feminine. I get the same feeling when I talk to animals too. Um, sometimes I'll talk to dogs that are clearly female, like they are female, but they're energy, their personality, their character to me feels more masculine. So for this house that they just walked through, I feel like it is a little bit more of a masculine house in the way that it was Ryan and taken care of and how it feels about itself as a house. And here is John's house. This is, looks promising. It's interesting because he says, Josh says this is John's house, but that house is smaller than the other house so I feel like maybe it could be switched but I'm not sure um, just because that seems more of like a servant's house than the other house did which might be why the other house was saying even though it was let I'm thinking it's servants quarters it doesn't feel like servants quarters so okay let's see let's see what the inside of this house looks like what it has to say or feel. See, it's so frustrating. Like as a medium, you just want confirmation or validation of what it is that you're perceiving, but with these scenarios, it's a little bit hard. Not as big as the other house, but this was his personal house. So this could be better. Wow. All right, this is promising. Already walking in here. You can see everything is still here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the light out in a minute. This is amazing. This is that Southern vibe I love. Abandoned houses in the South, I just, something about it, wow. This is treasure. I love this room right here, this like living room-esque type thing. There's just like an older woman who's there. I feel like she was related on the mom's side. I don't know anything about the South, but she says she's a mammy. Um, and I know there's a difference between Mima and Mama. She says she's a Mama, not a Mima. So maybe I'll look that up later. Or if you want to let me know in the comments below, what's the difference between Mama and Mima? Because I know one's paternal and one's maternal. So let me know. <laughs> She just said that she lived there in her old age instead of being like in a retirement home or something. Or lived there before she went to a retirement home. This is treasure. And it's not, it's not treasure where obviously you take or steal. It's just treasure because you just found this amazing time capsule. And you're in it. You know, you're in it now. It's, it's history. I love this so much. You even got the rocking chair. Yes. <laughs> and another one. I love it. I love it. Oh my god. This is great. Old fat TVs by Samsung. Oh 
All this is a gem. See the two beds? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna head through the kitchen, see what else before we go upstairs. Still works. Man, such a gem this place is. I, I love this. There is the soul of an older man that just walked forward when Josh put his, uh, tried to play the piano and he's dressed like a butler of some sorts and he says, uh, please don't touch that. <laughs> he walked forward, he looks very much uh, just like a, if you take Lurch but make him a southern gentleman and that maybe that's the wrong way to say that. But uh, yeah, he was like, please don't touch that and he walked in through the door that's over by the kitchen. All right, let's check upstairs. Hopefully it's as good as this floor, because this floor is amazing. So there, before they go upstairs, there is also the soul of a little dog there. He looks like some sort of like cute little terrier. I think it may have been a girl, but they said that everyone ever called, everyone always called her a boy. So, <laughs> um, but this little dog says that their master, the person that owned them, was a was a man, and that they really loved their owner a lot. And this man was older. Um, you like think grandpa wearing like a white t-shirt and trousers with suspenders, and she says that she was just quote her, um, his little buddy, and they would just putz around the house and do everything together, which is adorable. Like think of like the Wizard of Oz like Toto dog. That is what this little creature looks like. Here we go. I actually heard something up here though, so I gotta be careful. It was like walking, like maybe an animal. All right, that's a, that's a huge wasp right there by the window. This is awesome. Huge wide open room. So at one point in time, there is the soul of a woman stepping forward. She's probably in like her 20s. And she says, this room used to be her room. And she makes me feel a little bit like the character, um, oh, what is her name? I don't think it was Gidget. I could be wrong. But the one main character of the woman who played the reporter or the lady that wanted to write for the news and do reports from the help. And she says that, only she has blonde hair. Um, it's like a like a lighter, like a dirty blonde. And she says at one point in time, she lived in this room. It was her room. And she was someone who wanted to travel and explore. And for her and her time when she lived, which is, she says like the 1930s maybe, um, it wasn't cool for women to travel or want to like go out and go to school. She says she was able to go to school, but she wanted to travel more and she wasn't allowed. But this was her room and she said it looked a lot different. There was like a, a different wallpaper underneath it or it wasn't this gray color. It was more of like a peachy color, she says. A bit empty, but nah, this is cool. Just a railroad, you know, no big deal. Just, whoa, oh my God. I ran downstairs because there was a wasp like this big, like those killer Japanese wasps. <laughs> it was just right up, right up at me and they ran back down. There he is, he's by the, he's by the window. Dude, he's so freaking big. Oh my God. Oh, one left. Dude, all right, we're gonna go here. Whoa. That bedroom is cool. Did you see the giant fireplace on one side? Oh, my husband and I, we have been talking about if we ever are fortunate enough to be able to build our own house, we wanna have our fireplace in our bedroom, like one of the old style houses like this. Oh my goodness. Goodbye, wasps. Oh, another cool thing. You can tell this place is old because the door. Look how thin that door is. Wait. Look how thin that door is. And the nails are like almost like square nails. They were used like back in the day as well. 
Oh, and like I was saying, welcome to the south. Okay, the railroad tracks are cool because when they were doing the opening of this video, there is a man who tells me that he used to use the railroad that was that would run through there. He says he's not associated with the house, but he knew the people that lived there, the houses that they're in right now. Um, he said, but he would use the railroad as a way for transportation, but not in the like, not in the normal acceptable way. <laughs> he said back then it was acceptable, but he would just like wait on the railroad and when uh, the train would come by, he would literally just hitch a ride on the train because he knew on what day and at what time it would come by and where it would be going. And he would use it to get from one place to the other. Um, but he said that he did just like, he calls it bum work. I don't know what bum work is. He says, I ain't a bum, but I did bum work. So, um, but he says that he used to use that area out front to catch the train to go from where he was there to another place, which is interesting. Got the cool railroad right there. Nice view. This is definitely super, super cool, like I said. And look at the chests. I mean, I've been to so many antique stores, and seriously, these chests are the same ones I see in antique stores that you can buy. Love that Mary in the back. Wow. Dude, these were old flags at one point there. Like there, this is Washington, D.C. So at this point in time, there's an older man stepping forward, um, and he's associated with the house, not necessarily. He says he lived at this room. He lived in this room at one point, but he's kind of annoyed that Josh is there. He feels that it's a little bit of an invasion of privacy, and he's the only soul so far that stepped forward with that sort of energy or um, emotions. He's sorry. I'm trying to ask him how he wants to be described and I, he doesn't have any hair and he saw, thought that it was rude for me to say that he doesn't have hair. Um, but he says um, that he just doesn't think that, he says no people, uh, sorry he has an act, he has a southern accent, but he basically says people shouldn't be snooping where their noses don't belong. Um, so anyways, continuing. The outside of this house, check it. Got like the two like garden things for plants in the entrance. This sun is beautiful. The outside makes it look like, like a hidden temple. So overgrown that you can't actually see the house. The roof is gone. You know, this looks pretty spooky. Looks like there was a sign right there at one point. We're at the car. We're getting out of here. Really good video. Like I said, really cool place. I loved every minute of it. It's a gem. Um, so yeah, see you in the next spot. Okay, before we move on to the next locations that Josh is going to, let's recap with the first two houses. So the energy of the first house, the one that Josh said was where the people that took care of the property lived, which I feel like at some point they didn't because all the information that I was getting was more of like a family lived there. And again, I don't know too much about, I don't know anything about the history. I'm just blind reacting to this. The house makes me feel like families have lived there, at least five families. And they've been very, very just intertwined and connected. And uh, the house is very whole. Um, given the explanation that I gave at the beginning of this video, people might be asking, well, doesn't the house want it to be taken care of? Doesn't it want to just be where it needs to be? And the answer is no. Um, it's kind of at peace and it's kind of at peace with the way it is and how it's life. I mean, it's an old house. It's like, I don't really need to be here anymore. And it still has purpose. It has purpose of the animals that live there and the people that come and explore it. So it isn't upset that anyone isn't living in it anymore. It's very just at peace and quiet. Now, the second house, the one that Josh said that the doctor lived in, that house has a little more energy. It's not quite as at peace as the other houses i feel like more people have lived in it and the things that they've gone through have been a little bit more tumultuous maybe in the sense of not tumultuous like bad but just they've lived more 
you know how like one person in a scenario can be super cool, calm and collected no matter what and then someone else is a little more reactive, not as confident and just more like energetic? That is the house vibe that I get from the White House compared to the first house that they were in. So I feel like the people that lived in that house also had the same sort of ideology or the way that they lived or characteristic personality. Uh, they went through life, everything was fine, but some people that lived there were a little more um, insecure or just like jumpy, I guess. So if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell because next week we're going to be going into part two of Josh's exploration for exploring the abandoned ghettos of the south, which I feel like ghettos is not a nice word to use, but again, this is Josh's video and so far it's fabulous. So if you guys are interested for part two, tune in next week. Until then, we are your meta-sa-kids!